Good morning and welcome to News Watch Today. I'm Cameron Lee. And I'm Austin Mickey. Two victims found dead in downtown Boston Hotel. And Texas wildfires continue to rage on. Titus Smith is here with your forecast and your latest sports news. This is News Watch Today. Thanks for joining us this morning. You know, today is a rare day to be doing news. It happens only oh. once every four years, I think. It's leap day. I know, and I'm very excited to see what this day holds. Hopefully we have some nice weather. Titus, what can you tell us about that? Well, I can tell you weather's gonna be nicer than most leap years, most likely. Uh, today we're looking at a low of 25, uh, still fairly cold, uh, but luckily winds are only seven miles an hour, so we shouldn't be looking at too crazy of a wind chill. Uh, 25 is, is about normal, I believe, for this week and this time of year. Humidity 67, which is going to stay later in the day, but temperatures will rise to a high of 51. Still cloudy, uh, so maybe wear a light jacket. Uh, but luckily, uh, things are going to be looking mostly nice. Wind's only going to go up by two miles an hour, and the sun should be peeking through on occasion, so we'll be looking for that glimmer of light. Back to you. Thanks, Titus. Looks like it's going to be kind of a chilly day, but warmer than the past day. So. I know. Yesterday was freezing cold, freezing. but we only need a light jacket today, so that's nice. But I guess we'll know more in just a little while during Titus's full forecast. This week, homicide detectives were at a popular Boston high-rise hotel. The authorities say a worker at the Moxie Hotel discovered two people dead inside a room on the 13th floor. What exactly happened inside remains a mystery, but the district attorney and police said the investigation is early and ongoing. The community is not in danger. The guests who stayed here over the weekend didn't see or hear anything suspicious happening, but are concerned the hotel remained open for business as the medical examiner's office removed two bodies out the back door when no one was looking. However, several guests canceled their reservations or left early once the word spread. On Monday night, the Springfield Police Chief declared that the main focus for 2024 will be reducing gun violence. This statement came after Chief Paul Williams addressed the City Council with the annual crime report. The report showed there were a great number of shooting deaths in Springfield last year, and this issue continues to affect the people of Springfield as there were th three shootings just last week. According to Chief Williams' crime report, there was a record-setting number of guns seized in 2023 at 266 illegal gun seizures. On a positive note, fewer guns were reported stolen from cars, and in the first month of 2024, there were lower numbers of people being injured due to gun violence. However, Chief Williams warns that these trends may not continue. Additionally, the police chief announced that the department will be creating a cold case unit. Veteran detectives will be brought back by the department to focus on old cases, starting with homicides and then moving on to sexual assaults. This past Friday, Evangel University held the annual Made for More Women's Conference in Spence Chapel. Made for More is organized by the women of Evangel and includes a message from a guest speaker, as well as a fashion show. Mackenzie Franks, the former chair of Made for More, says the event is intended to bring the women together for a night of unity and worship the Lord. So I went to my first Made for More um, my freshman year, which was previously Fashion Fever, um, and I fell in love with the event, and so I knew I had to get involved sophomore year. So I applied, and I've been on committee every year, and I've just loved it. I love the women of Evangel. I love being that inspiration for them and just bringing them all together. This event is a one-night conference held only in the spring semester. Taking a look at Evangel's summer plans for renovating Spence Hall and what that will mean for grad students, as well as what will be taking place over in Scott Hall this upcoming fall semester. With more on the story is Caleb Wilson. Scott Hall has recently been designated for both men and women beginning this fall semester. The north side of Scott will be reserved for female undergrad students, while the south side for men. Simultaneously, Spence Hall will permanently be closing its doors to undergrad students. While the hall will be welcoming residential grad students with a hall designed for their specific time in life, students will be able to rent single rooms or entire suites this upcoming fall semester. 
So this is about pivoting evangel for the future. Our graduate student demographics along with non-traditional undergrad demographics are expanding and there's greater need for uh, residence life uh, options for them. Uh, right now, the only thing open to that demographic is our rental properties and those tend to fill up and even have a waiting list. Uh, and so this will give more variety of options to this expanding demographic. And that is a wrap. Thank you all for watching. I am Caleb Wilson and you are watching Newswatch. Back to you guys. In the Texas Panhandle, homes, businesses, and farms have been reduced to nothing but charred remains due to a massive wildfire that broke out on Monday afternoon. Residents were forced to evacuate as this wildfire quickly became the second largest in state history. This wildfire, now known as the Smokehouse Creek Fire, has scorched more than 850,000 acres of land and is only 3% contained, according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. In order to secure resources to help fight the massive blazes, Governor Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration for 60 Texas counties on Tuesday. The Smokehouse Creek Fire, along with four other active wildfires, were the result of extremely high temperatures and dry, windy conditions. Scientists at Climate Central anticipate that wildfires as a whole will only continue to get worse as the world continues to burn fossil fuels that release planet-warming greenhouse gases. Up next, Evangel University hosts a student ministries conference. And we'll have a special guest come to talk more about Evangel University's S'mores Indoors event. We'll hear more about that when we get back from this break. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for mental health and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seats for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. What a disaster. <laughs> You're a disaster. This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. Make an emergency plan today. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. Anyone interested in student ministries during Evangel's 2024 to 2025 academic year, you are invited to attend the Student Ministries Conference. This will take place on the Evangel campus in Spence Chapel from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is for any students who may want to be involved in leading a small group, student-led chapels, prayer ministry worship leading, preaching, ministering to EU students on campus, or creative arts on an impact team. Everyone is welcome to attend this conference to learn more about these opportunities and others. Light refreshments will be served prior to the opening session in Spence Chapel. Cameron Lee is standing by with a special guest. Cameron? Thanks, Austin. Today we have Anison Eccles, the AB Events team leader, here to talk about the S'mores and Doors event at Evangel University. Thanks for being here today, Anison. My first question, what even is the S'mores and Doors event? What do you do there? What's the purpose of it? Yeah, so S'mores and Doors is an event we've had for a few years, and it's one of our spring AB events. And it's kind of just to bring everyone together during midterms. In the fall we have bingo, and in the spring we do s'mores and doors, so it's in the joust from 8 to 10 next Tuesday. And it's kind of just to break up midterms and give people a little bit of a study break, since we know that that's kind of a stressful time for everyone. So 
It's a, yeah, in the joust, and there's just different activities and events going on, such as rock painting, wood painting, performers doing live music, um, temporary tattoos, just fun things like that, yard games, just spread out all around the joust. Okay, and so what is your role in taking part of planning this event? Yeah, so I'm the event team leader, so it's actually really cool because last year I was on the event team, and this year I get to be the leader, so I kind of get to see everything come together. And basically I just get to delegate tasks to my event team and do purchase forms and contact performers, things like that, and get all the food ready, all the s'mores. There's lots of different kinds of chocolate that's going to be there, so <laughs> I'm excited about that. That's cool. So you kind of head over that entire event. You make it happen, which is super nice. It's super um, fun and interesting to hear about. So tell me, what is your favorite part in not in the planning process, but the favorite part of the event that you got to plan? I think, honestly, just seeing it all come together. My favorite part will definitely be the event itself, but I love to see everything come together, and my event team has done a fantastic job, and just AB as a whole and helping me with that, but just decorating, getting everything set up, and purchasing all the things that we need for it, and just seeing, yeah, all the pieces of the puzzle fit together in the end. Awesome, well, that's exciting. So I know you mentioned earlier there will be live music. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about what we should expect with the live yeah, music? Yeah, so whenever you enter the joust, that performance area right there with the screen, people are going to be playing live music there. I think there's some people playing guitar, piano, such things like that. But we have Abby DeMint singing, so that's exciting. And Carice, our Louis RD, is going to be singing also, and some others. So I'm very excited for that. But it's just a chill, cozy vibe. So all the music's kind of slow-paced and relaxing for everyone to watch. Okay, and is that going to be like self-written songs, or is that more like um, covers? Yeah, most of it's just covers of songs. Okay. So yeah, they're sending them our way, and then we'll send them back, so we get to check all those out. Awesome. And then I know you kind of already explained what the purpose of it is, but what is the heart behind the event? Why does AB put it on every year? I think it's just to bring the community together, like I said, in stressful times, but also just we love to have events and just bring people together and watch people that normally wouldn't talk or see each other maybe get to know each other. And as AB, our job is just to go around and talk to new people and bring people together. So, But I think my favorite part of the event is the rock painting. And this year, we're doing wood blocks, too, along with that. So everyone loves that part. And they love to take something from the event and just come in and paint rocks and then have something to take with them. Yeah, I mean, I went last year, and my rock was by no means a good painting, but it was fun yes, to get to do it yes, in the moment. That's all that matters. Um, what has been the most popular, I want to say attraction, but you know, set up booth that you have of the activities you have, which one's the most popular besides rock painting? Um, probably bracelet making. Okay. There's lots of different beads and strings to choose from, and we kind of just lay them out on tables, but that was really popular last year. And then yard games, everyone loves cornhole and horseshoe and all that good stuff, so... Of course, the most popular is the s'mores themselves, but that's what people are there for. <laughs> well, speaking of the s'mores themselves, the event's held indoors. Kind of explain how we're not setting fires in the building. How's it So happening? we use these little lighter type things. It's kind of hard to explain, but they're just like these little lighters that shoot fire out of them. So it's all safe, no fires indoors, but they're just set up, yeah, with the table. And we'll have different kinds of chocolate and stuff like that to go with it. But Okay, and so we have like little sticks and the yep. people get to... Roast S'mores, hot chocolate, cider, all that good stuff. Okay, that yeah. sounds exciting. I might have to go get me a s'more. Oh, yes, absolutely. And when did you say the event's happening? <laughs> Next Tuesday from 8 to 10 in the Joust. Okay. March 5th, so. And beyond um, all the other activities, the live music, the s'mores, what has been your favorite part in, you know, not just the planning process, because we already kind of talked about that, but the the whole... The event coming together as a whole, what, what has the, been the most exciting part for you to see that happen? I think it's just exciting to see how willing people are to help and how willing my event team has been and performers. And we have storybook readers, too. Donnie Marsh is reading for a segment of that, so that'll be fun. But, yeah, I think just seeing people's heart for the event and for the campus and for the community just all together, because obviously it's fun to see the tedious things come together, but also just people in general and getting to work with different people that I normally wouldn't. So... That's well, exciting. that's awesome. Thank you for being here today yes. talking about S'mores and Doors. Sounds like a fun event. I'm definitely going to try to make it if I can. Uh, let's go back to the desk with uh, Austin and Titus. Thanks, Cameron. So, Titus, I'm pretty excited about S'mores and Doors just because you never know what March weather is going to look like. So, what can you tell us about the weather in the upcoming week? Well, I can tell you that uh, we're going to be looking at warmer weather, especially for the weekend, but slowly coming down. So far, no precipitation, but I'll have more on that on my full forecast.
When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. The Springfield City Council approved $1.1 million in funding for a permanent women's shelter during Monday night's City Council meeting. The funding will go towards Safe to Sleep, a program that provides overnight shelter for over 400 women annually. Safe to Sleep is this area's only low barrier shelter and is designed to meet the needs of women experiencing emergency homelessness. Since the council approved funding, Safe to Sleep will have its own facility. The Council of Churches plans to offer day programs, helping clients to meet with their case managers and get their GED. Leaders say that they are negotiating with property owner and hope to start construction by April 1st. You know, in times like this, it, that's what's exciting about it, stuff like this is because it's cold outside and mm -hmm. the people that are homeless right now are staying in these conditions. And so it's really exciting to hear of another shelter that's yeah. getting opened for It's people. really amazing. And I hope on opening day and throughout the construction, they have great weather. Oh, but that's true. Titus, what can you tell us about this week's weather? Well, I'll get to this week's later, but first let's do a small recap of what we're looking at today. We're making sure that this morning we're probably going to have a low of 25 uh, and precipitation. Uh, we're not going to have any. I'm going to restart. <clears throat> okay. okay. Well, I'll get to the week's forecast, but for now I'm going to do a small recap of today. The low is going to be 25 uh, with a 67% humidity. Winds are going to be low, but nothing too crazy to be worried about. Winds are only going to go up by 2 miles per hour later in the day, uh, but the high is going to be 51, mostly somewhat cloudy. Light will be peeking through, but it's going to be a cloudy day. As far as uh, today in history, uh, overall, it's been a warm day for the average. We're about 10 degrees hotter than normal, uh, nowhere cl close to the high, and our uh, low is about average for what this date normally is. Uh, over the month, we've had a little bit more precipitation than normal, which is a bonus. Uh, and for those of you that are going to be out, uh, be paying attention, that sunset is going to be at 6. Don't let the dark catch you. But now we're going to look at the, our satellites. Uh, we're seeing winds are going to be traveling across uh, the Texas area onto Florida, moving out across the Atlantic, uh, and onto radar. We're going to see that there's some rain coming in the uh, Texas area. None that seem to be hitting the Missouri yet. We will have to wait and see if we get some of that later. Uh, but a little bit of rain uh, over in the Oregon area. We're going to go ahead and move on to tomorrow's weather. This is where we're going to see some more change. You can see that in the northwest, there is a cold front coming in uh, with some pretty drastic storms. Uh, shouldn't be too horrible, hopefully, but some pretty good snow. Storms in the area. Missouri might get some light flurries of snow uh, in the morning tomorrow. Uh, but overall, we're just going to be enjoying the nicer weather. Just perhaps you might get some good pictures of snow. As for the week forecast, we're looking at Friday being about the same with a low of 30 and a high of 50. 
they're going to be coming up slowly into the weekend. So weekends will be pretty nice, uh, Monday included. Uh, and as we get on later into the week, temperatures are going to be going back down to the 60s. Lows are going to be fluctuating about the same, 50s to 30s, uh, but mostly cloudy uh, overall with some light peering through throughout the week. I do want to call attention to Sunday. We're going to be having some wind, so just pay attention. Uh, shouldn't be anything too drastic, but just be prepared. It may not be pretty. But that, for those of you ladies wearing hats, make sure that you've got them pinned down. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Titus. I'm excited for the 70 degrees to oh come back. Gosh. I've missed it these last two days. Mm -hmm. And today's going to be a bit colder, so I'll probably stay in, stay cozy and comfy, and maybe catch some sports games. Sounds like we're not going to wear hats, though, on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> not at all. And just around the quarter t corner, Titus Smith will be back to give us the latest in sports. This and more when we return. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. On Monday, the Los Angeles Clippers revealed the brand new logo and uniforms they will begin using next season when they move into the team's new arena. The uniforms are a combination of ember red, naval blue, and pacific blue. The primary logo will feature the points of a compass in an oncoming ship with basketball seams on its hull, surrounded by the Clippers' iconic C. This design is a nod to the franchise's maritime roots while also symbolizing the team's direction in the future. Jillian Zucker, the president of Clipper Business Operations, said the uniform design was a result of gathering tons of feedback and insight from all across Clipper Nation. You know, Cameron, I'm not much of a Clippers fan, <laughs> but I'm kind of excited to see all the changes they're going to be making. I was going to say, I know nothing about the Clippers, but if they need it new, I'm glad they're getting it. I wonder, I wonder what else is going on in the world of sports, and the best person to tell us about that is Titus. What can you say? Well, the KCAC have announced their all-conference players of choice. Evangel has seven students named on the KCAC all-conference, six of them receiving honorable mentions, and one of them has been placed on the second team. The players listed for honorable mentions include Garrett DeVault, Jace Coffey, Micah Clayton, Jazzy Kirby, Carson Dillard, and Jamie Jenkins. Jamie Jenkins. Additionally, Josh Pritchett was the player chosen for all KCAC second team. But now on to golf. Uh, Evangel's men's golf team placed fourth as a team in the 4HIM Classic in Texas. Their players placed in individual competitions fifth and tied for 12th, 26th, 61st, and 66th. The fifth place finish is held by Thomas Ballin, a freshman who scored 74, 77, and then 74 across the rounds with a total of 225. But now in the national news, 
National College Basketball, the Red Raiders fans, interrupted the Longhorns and Red Raiders game after a Longhorn player body checked a Red Raider fan. Which, start, fan, not fan, player. The fans started throwing objects onto the court and even at the Longhorned players in their frustration. Luckily, their coach, Grant McCasland, took the mic and helped calm down the crowd, but not after the crowd received their own technical. But luckily, a Women's National Hockey League has reached its mid-season. It has so far grossed more profits than expected. However, players are not seeing this influx in their own payment. Stan Kaskin, the owner, has stated that while the last two months' profits did exceed expectations, so did expenditures. Overall, Kasten states that there is much review going on behind the scenes in order to ensure the PWHL is a sports league that will last. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Titus. A couple things I didn't know there. Number one, I did not know that fans could receive their own technical. It's got to be getting pretty crazy if fans are receiving their own technical. Uh, and I'm very excited about women's oh, hockey. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I'm wondering if it's going to be as aggressive as the men's. If there's it has to fight. be. It has to be. Oh, I think it's going to be amazing. I'm excited. Yep. I'm going to watch it. Me too. And when we get back, a teen follows in her dad's footsteps. And Titus is with us for one final look at the forecast. All of this when we return. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if smoking is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. Here's a good story for you today. A firefighter in southern New Jersey is extraordinarily proud of his daughter. That's because she has decided to follow in her dad's footsteps. While Olivia Hale understands firefighting is a dangerous profession, she is no stranger to putting herself in harm's way. She's tiny but mighty, standing at only five foot three, and is one of the newest members of the Feral Fire Department in Monroeville, New Jersey. In 2019, she was a waitress who happened to be at the right place at the right time. She ran into a burning home in Cherry Hill to rescue an elderly couple. She and another woman helped bring the couple to safety before fire crews arrived and put out the blaze. Olivia was only 19 at the time. Nearly five years later, Olivia continues running into burning buildings, but this time she's suited up and ready for the action. Olivia just graduated from the Fire Academy with her father right by her side. Olivia also has someone else watching her, her one-year-old son, Kingston. Balancing a dangerous job in a male-dominated industry isn't lost on this single mother who admits there were moments when she felt intimidated. Olivia says she's grateful for the brotherhood within the department, and she finally feels like she's found her calling. I don't know about you, but that just melts my heart. It's so sweet to hear that she's stepping up, you know, that she's falling in her dad's mm -hmm. footsteps. It's really amazing. And while I'm not running into burning buildings, I also look up to my dad. So it's real nice to hear a story like that. There are a lot of people in this world filling in to boots that might not fit. One person doing that specifically today, Titus Smith, standing in for Aubrey, doing weather and sports. Titus, I know we got one more look at our weather, but you are a man of many talents today, aren't you? Uh, hopefully it proves to be that way, and thank you. I'd like to give one final recap of the week this week. 
Uh, we're looking at uh, the 70s in the weekend and coming back down. Remember that Sunday's going to be a little bit windy, uh, clouds mostly, but some sun's going to be here on Friday and Saturday. Uh, lows, I, which I wasn't able to touch, was coming up to 50s, dip back down to 30s. Overall, fairly warm, nothing to complain about. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Titus. I'm excited for the warm weather to come back. I know I said it earlier, but I'm just not a cold weather girl. Me either. I'm really looking forward to the nice weather. I'm going to walk my new puppy. Oh, there you yeah. go. I'm very excited. <laughs> and that's all for us today. I'm Austin Mickey. And I'm Cameron Lee. This has been News Watch Today. For more on EU TV and for the latest Evangel news, go to euvalormedia.com.